Tungabhadra's entry in Mantralaya. On 1st October 2009 at 8 p.m., the culinary specialist Vijayendran and Kumar got ready with all the things to be taken for the tour. At 8.30 p.m., I got a telephone call from Ane Gundi, Mallapa at the other end telling, Sir, it has been raining here incessantly for the last four days. You may have to give a second thought about your yatra to this place. Or else, after reaching Mantralaya, check up the position before coming to Navabrindavana. Vijayendran, seeing my perturbation, asked me what the matter was. I told him the forewarning message, asking him whether the trip could be cancelled. Vasu Murari and Kumar kept silent, not knowing what should be done. I, however, preferred that I should contact Mantralaya before taking the final decision and telephoned Giri, who arranges vehicles for us at that place. It has been raining here for the past two days. Now it has abated somewhat. The pujas in the Srimad took place as usual and devotees are coming out now, says, uh, said Giri. How is the water level in the Tungabhadra? Two years ago, in the same season, when you had come here with the devotees, the water was near the Manjaliyampa temple. Now also it's the same situation here. By the time you come here, tomorrow afternoon, the water should have drained off. It's only the rain water that has come near the temple. Should we start or not? Many of our group members would have already reached the central station. I too am ready to leave. But should we proceed with the journey or not? I ask with great concern. You can definitely come. If you have some anxiety, you may check up with others and then start. I then asked over phone a staff of the streamer and Sri Shashikant, who has a shop near the Manchaliyamma temple. They too said that we could travel to Mantralaya. And so I arranged for a van and transported all our things to Central Station. It was 9.30 p.m. and we were unloading things from the van at the Central Station. Ainavara Mohan Rao phoned then and said, There is rain in Mantralaya. Have you inquired about the position to which I replied in the positive? Close on its heels, I got a call from Balaji Rao and I told him I was in a dilemma about undertaking the journey or not. In 2007, we had seen the worst of the floods. It's certainly not that serious now, as I understand from the source I had inquired with. So you can proceed, he said. I then went to the railway platform with all our luggages. I contacted Giri again and he said there was no rain then except for slight drizzle and that the rain water would flow away, suggesting that we could go over there unhesitatingly. The Yatrikas travelling from Chennai were all present at Central Station. Some devotees were due to join us at Mantralaya travelling separately from Coimbatore and Ahobilam. I got in touch with them and informed them that, if possible, they could reach Mantralaya in the night itself and that I had made arrangements for a vehicle to take them to their lodgings in Mantralaya. As an alternative, I suggested that they could stay at Anu Mantralaya and reach Mantralaya in the morning or remain there itself until we pick them up the next day. At 10.30 p.m., I phoned up Shashikant again. He said the water flow was only up to the steps of the Manchaliyamma temple and that we could undertake the journey. In September, October 2007, we had experienced heavy rains for two or three days and the Tungabhadra river was then in spate. And on a few earlier occasions too, I had seen water touching the stone steps leading to the Manchaliyamman temple. In 1980s, there was a small opening at the rear side of the Brindavana Prakara to enter inside the Sri Mat. I had witnessed then the river water entering inside the mud through that gap. But there has been no problem on account of that any time before. Therefore, in 2007, our group of 44 travelled in heavy rain and covered Mantralaya, Panchamukhi, Bikshalaya, Kallur and Manvi, having darshan everywhere 
to our heart's content and reach anegundi at that latter place we were awed by the tungabhadra that was in full spread but could still have the navabrindavana darshan then by the grace of the almighty and the blessings of the gurus with these thoughts in my mind i asked everyone to board the train though there was a kind of unknown fear gripping me then mulling that even in the 2007 flood and torrential rains we had successfully completed the navabrindavana darshan i was yet feeling an uneasiness as to why my mind was not steady so i contacted giri again at 10:40 pm and said the condition is the same you can come all arrangements are ready if those traveling from coimbatore and ahobilam telephone to me i shall escort them here most of the members of the tour party were my relatives and the rest though not of my family were devout persons and they were all one in their prayer to shri guru raja that he should grace the successful completion of the yatra the train soon steamed out of Chen- uh, chennai central and after the ticket checking was over all the passengers occupied their respective berths and put off the lights before going to sleep though perturbed about the uncertainties i consoled myself with the hope that in a day or two before we travel to navabrindavana the water level should have subsided it was past 11:30 pm when my cell phone alerted me it was shashikant from mantralaya who was on the line has the water level receded you could have contacted me in the morning no please on the contrary there is continuous rain here and the water level is rising very fast it has now come near my shop too much beyond the steps leading to the manchaliamma temple have you already started from chennai was the alarming message from the other end disquieting me at that eerie hour i found all others sleeping peacefully at that time of the night i got in touch with giri again you should have already started i suppose nothing will happen please come no doubt there is rain now but by morning it should abate he said the party that had left at 11 am on 1st october 2009 from coimbatore by the kurla express reached mantralaya by 11 pm that night it was pouring heavily outside since giri's cell phone number was available with shri h nagraj he contacted him but was advised to stay at anumantralaya mat or at the railway station itself as it was raining heavily in mantralaya at that time giving an indication that they would all be ex- escorted to mantralaya in the morning and when the party went to the mrittika brindavana near the station there was not an inch of space there as the downpour had driven everyone to that place for shelter at the railway station there was no vacancy in the dormitory and they could not be remaining on the platform too so the group left for adoni by the last train unfortunately even there they could not find any place to sleep at night and the women fully drenched had to huddle themselves in a van there and what a disappointment it would have been for those who had come with great hopes of having darshan of navabrindavana in my company the expectation of the members to have some sleep at adoni in the later part of the night and then join us when our train arrived there proved however to be off the mark adverting to my predicament during the rail journey i should say that i could not sleep at all at least these people from coimbatore had come to adoni but i was more concerned about those who were yet to come from ahobilam not knowing where they would have been caught in the unkindly weather it was 1:30 am when the train had reached renigunta i prayed to lord venkatramana from the train itself looking in the direction of the tirupati hills at about 2 am i got a call from giri and his voice sounded alarming sir water has started coming inside the town it has come to narahari teetha dormitory where at you have planned to stay tomorrow we are all keeping vigil and going around the town to put the residents on the alert on hearing these words 
I telephoned the mantraalaya mat, and the voice from that side informed, "There is no time to talk now. Water has entered the prakara. We are removing all important things to safer places. Please assess the condition tomorrow morning before journeying to this place from the railway station." Snapping the line hurriedly, I found everyone fast asleep in the compartment, but I was keeping awake, overwhelmed then by a strange fear. My throat started choking with grief, and not knowing what is to be done next, my lips started articulating, "Guru Raja, Guru Raja," the heart soulfully praying for his succor. If Mantralaya had been in such an awful state at the time we were in Chennai Central Station, we could have called off the trip, or even if we had known of it when the train was in Reni Gunta, we could have detrained there. I was therefore in a dilemma as to whether we should get down at some station en route or continue our journey further. The train was running then in its usual flamboyance and without any hitch, even as the Tungabhadra River was entering Mantralaya with great ferocity at that time. 